Good morning, friends. It's another day that the Lord has made. And let's rejoice and be glad in Him. We live in very interesting times. Apostle Paul, of course, called these times perilous times. In the book of 2 Timothy, I think third chapter. And um, all the writers of the New Testament letters warn against the um, backsliding and different stirrings happening in end times. And I think that if we are not experiencing the end times themselves, according to the book of Revelation, for example, or according to the book of Daniel, or even Matthew 24, of that matter, then we are most definitely experiencing events that are influencing and changing the mindset of the world for the actual end time events. One of them, of course, is in the book of Revelation, the mark of the beast. I remember I was in the United States of America, talked to somebody there, and of course, some uh, people have, uh, you know, taken granted for good life, and, and he said, one of the Americans said that most of my countrymen, uh, I mean, they shouldn't be concerned about the mark of the beast, because they already wear the mark of the feast and had a good life. Well, that was, of course, a joke. And, uh, but, um, uh, you know, coronavirus has most definitely uh, changed the world today. The uh, church has come to be divided among those who uh, believe vaccination is all right and others who think that something really bad happens to you when you accept this vaccination. Some, of course, believe that there are some tracking devices in there or even um, to um, lessen and, and, and uh, in other words, kill some of the mankind through this vaccination program. And uh, I think a lot of people have gone way overboard expressing themselves on it and uh, just done a lot of harm um, rather than, than good. Though I acknowledge the problem we have and uh, don't deny it, and especially recently, Estonian government, for example, issued new restrictions with the um, negative B, uh, PCR test not being sufficient to prove that you're, you're all right to walk among the public, only vaccination or then the, uh, uh, that you have gone through the disease and actually had it recently would give you that uh, freedom. And many employers have started to let their employees go because of not being vaccinated. And those things are hurting society most definitely and really instilling this idea that you're not really free. You, you, you may have your you know, opinion about vaccination, but you're, you can't really apply it because we will put pressure on you in different ways. So, so I don't know what the answer to that is. Maybe we should form uh, coffee shops for vaccinated people and those who are not vaccinated. Welcome not all vaccinated people. So you don't want to get the disease, don't go there. <laughs> if you think that you get disease through these people. The truth, of course, is that vaccinated people are carrying the disease as much, almost, as those who never been vaccinated and uh, never had the disease yet. And a lot of 
people in the hospitals today, I think close to 38% are vaccinated people. So they were the ones promised that if they do get the disease, they will never have it so severe. But being in the hospital tells you that it is severe, that they really go through it severely. So a lot of holes in our government's um, uh, understanding and application of things today. However, I don't think we should come to the place where we complain and um, rebel. Of course, I am against certain things and uh, because every thinking person would understand that. But I don't think we should forget praying for our government and to not to let us get pulled out of the love of God. You know, I can be so mad at the prime minister that I just start to be hateful. And that's not right. I need to maintain the love of God. Uh, Saturday we had this big event. A lot of people showed up at the Freedom Square and began to express their ideas. And of course, some of the people who got up on the stage were extremists. And I don't agree with the, some of the tone of voices and some of the uh, wordings and messages people carry. That's not the way to win. Bible says, win the evil with good. So for me to really get into the same game and, uh, and try to, you know, try to be like politicians are and try to beat up each other at every opportunity just to form a mindset in these people about these, you know, leaders. So think of me, I'm much better. So I think we as Christians should carry a better behavior and walk according to the love of God. And in the middle of it all, we as Christians need to keep our focus on the Lord and on the Word of God. And along these lines, I want to just bring a scripture to you this morning out of the book of Proverbs, the book of wisdom, one of my favorite books, of course. And it says that my son attend to my words. So that is a deliberate action. And that is not just a casual listening to a Christian radio or Christian television is playing at the background or I'm listening to something on YouTube, which is all fine. I do it too. Don't think I'm condemning it. But that's not sufficient. Uh, it says, incline the ear unto my sayings and let them not depart, depart from thine eyes. Put your eyes on these verses. Don't just rely on your memory. Of course, I know some of these or most of the, I mean, I remember, of course, all of the scriptures. If you quote me something, I remember if it's in the Bible or if it's quoted right. But I cannot quote everything from the memory. But I've read through the Bible so many times, especially the book of Proverbs, that I would remember most of the verses here. But that's not sufficient for, for my spiritual nourishment, just to remember it. I need daily to put my eyes on that word again. Now, I had some fried potatoes and sweet potatoes, I think Sunday night, if I remember right. And uh, I cut the raw potatoes right on the pan. I did it. You know, not like the first time, but I haven't done it for many, many years. I've always boiled potatoes and then fried them on the pan. Fried potatoes is just a delicious meal all by itself, if you don't know it yet. But the Stones love it. But memory of that food on Sunday evening is not feeding me today on Tuesday morning. 
I need to put that food back into my mouth again today to be fair I may have a good memory of the Sunday afternoon meal which I do we went together with our church members to a new place in near Pyle, our church area and uh, surprisingly they brought up especially the meal I ordered a lot of meat and uh, I've never had in any restaurant like in Estonia for example so much meat product so I ate it it was good meat too I couldn't even eat it all and 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 that was a that was a re remarkable and uh, and and rememberable meal but that memory is not feeding me tomorrow I gotta put new piece of meat into my mouth so the fact that I remember a scripture like uh, so God loved the world that he gave his only forgotten begotten son that whoever believes in him shall be saved uh, it's not perish but shall be saved you know I'm not that good quoting in English but what I'm saying that that I can actually quote the scripture. I remember it word by word is not the same as putting your eyes on that word again and letting it feed you, inspire you, and build you up and make you fruitful. So friends, let us not forget feeding our spirit daily because all the news a lot of fake news among them of course all the criticism complaining spiritual negative influences coming to us trying to feed us daily and let us not become weak by under nourishing our spirit and our relationship with jesus and with the saints brothers and sisters around us and keeping those relationships strong because we need that strength in these days we live.